Hi. Tonight, I wanted to talk a little bit about motivation. And I know because of the coronavirus, most of you are locked at home. Some of you will be with your horses, which is great, and others won't be, which can be really difficult. And I understand that. And I think that it's very difficult to stay motivated when we're in this sort of lockdown situation and we don't know what the future holds. We don't know when things are going to go back to normality. So for people that regularly show their horses and things, it's really hard to find motivation because you haven't got something that you're preparing for. And for those of you that, that don't show, it can also be very difficult because, you know, you haven't really got that social connection and things and people to chat with and people to meet up with and go for trail rides with and things like that. So it can be very difficult. I read something a friend of mine on Facebook wrote just a few minutes ago, and she's not a writer. And she said, is anybody having trouble finding motivation to do anything? And I think it really is a big problem right now because the world is so different to what it was a month ago and we're all just getting used to it. And so I think that this is also a time that our horses can really help us and that the fact that we do ride, even if we're not riding right now because we can't ride right now, and I know a lot of you won't be able to, It's some people don't think it's essential travel to go out and um, go for your riding lesson or visit your horse or whatever it is. So um, some of you won't be with your horses. And that's why I think it's so important that we have a community here where we can come and chat and get sort of horsey information or horsey time without actually having the horse with us, if that's the case for you. If it's not the case for you, if you are still with your horse and still able to work your horse, yay, lucky you, um, it's also can be quite isolating when you don't have your instructor coming regularly or people that you usually ride with and things like that, you know, when you get in together with groups of people to ride together and you can't do any of that at the moment and probably not for the foreseeable future. So I think that the can do community is really important there. And that's why I'm doing these free meetings and that's why I'm welcoming you to come and join me in a meeting so that we can just talk about our horses and our training. So, What's the, what's the secret to remaining motivated? And I think the secret is doing a little bit as often as you can. So let's say you can't ride at the moment, then you can still do a little bit. You know, you can still learn, you can still make plans for what you're going to do when you can ride. And that's the nice thing about the can do training is that it's a lifetime membership. So you can come in here and while we're all a bit isolated at the moment, you can meet this great community of people, make some friends and really start planning for what you're going to do later. For those of you that do have contact with your horse at the moment, it's a fabulous time to start something like this. The great thing about the can do training is it's nothing to do with the hours in the saddle. You know, this whole miles under the belt and that sort of thing that we hear all the time really isn't that relevant. What's relevant is good quality time you spend training your horse. So going out with an aim, a lesson plan and taking your horse through that step by step to achieve something. And as you achieve these little things, they build on one another until, you know, we come out the other end of this crisis and you've got a horse that's really ready to go, really safe, really confident because you've put that time in. You don't have to go out and ride the horse for an hour. You don't have to go out and achieve amazing things every day with your horse, not at all. If you go about this in a very structured way, which is why my training is structured like that. So we start right at the very beginning with the horse's emotional level. We get that right get the horse emotional level, understand how the horse thinks, where the horse is emotionally, because if the horse is too emotional, it's not learning well. If the horse isn't emotional enough, it's also not learning well. We need to find that engagement zone in the middle there, where the horse is emotional enough, like more emotional, more alert than it would be if it was just standing in the paddock, but not so emotional, as to be scared. So there's a really nice place in the middle there that I call the engagement zone, which is where the horse learns really well. So it's the first thing we do. The first thing we do in my can do training is we find that. And it's gonna be different for every horse. And every horse is going to require a different amount of pressure to get the horse into that level. And for some horses, 
you know, we all know this with some horses, you can look at them and that's pressure for a horse. You know, just looking at it, some horses will move away from that. Other horses to get the horse to move, you know, you might need to be, make yourself really big, for example. So all the horses are different, um, but we need to know how our horse reacts, how our particular horse reacts and how to lower that emotional level. Because when you get a really anxious horse or a horse that's really flighty, it's really tempting to just try and always calm it down. Just, just calm down, shh, it's all right, they're gonna be fine. And we do this, you know, we really do. The problem is you can't force a horse to relax. You can't, it's a simple fact. You can't force anybody to relax. You know, the louder I shout at you relax, the less relaxed you're going to be. So we need to understand that. The only thing you can do is you can raise the emotional level a little bit and then you can offer the horse the opportunity to relax. So I don't mean a lot, I just mean a little bit, maybe get an extra inch of head elevation, for example. That will raise the emotional level just a little bit. Maybe ask the horse to walk a little bit faster. And these are the things engage the horse with learning. And so then the horse starts to focus on you and you start building this bubble of communication where you and the horse are in there together. And then you can say to the horse, now, okay, now would you like to relax? The horse go, oh, yeah, okay, I understand that. I can relax now. So that's what we cover first. We then look at the give to the bit exercises, which for me is essential that the horse is traveling correctly. So the horse is using its muscles correctly. And it all comes back to relaxation. So the horse with a really high head isn't relaxed because that horse is not in the engagement zone. It's not with me in my, my bubble at all. But the horse that is relaxed and has a nice, round, soft posture can actually be in my bubble and can be listening. So that's where I want to start. It doesn't matter really how old the horse is or what its educational level is. It's just for me to give to the bit work. Yes, the horse is in frame, as we call it, in frame. But it's not about that at all. It's about safety and it's about relaxation. And that's always what I want to start with. So unless I can get the horse giving to the bit and responding to my commands, then I'm not ready to start building that bubble of communication. So we go from there to then we take control of the feet, which is really the bit we're interested in, isn't it? You know, we not really want to ride around on the nose of the horse and point the nose in the direction because horses' feet don't always follow their noses, as we know. So um, the first thing to do is take control of the shoulders. Now I take control of the shoulders first because horses in their natural state, like in the wild, if you see a horse change direction, for example, if it's looking at one thing and it wants to look at something else. It'll usually move its shoulders around. So I don't talk to the hindquarters until later. First of all, I want to move the shoulders because I'm more likely to be able to get the horse to follow its shoulders with its hindquarters. Once I've done that, I, I'm then in a position to be able to do a lot of other things on the ground with the horse, which is fantastic. So I love long reining. It's a real dying art, but I just love it because it's so nice to be able to see the horse, see the horse's frame and feel the horse in your two hands. No draw reins, nothing pulling hard on the horse. You can feel if the horse is in self-carriage or not. Now we're always aiming for self-carriage with everything we do with the horse. People think about self-carriage and they think, oh, you mean the horse in the dressage arena? And I'm like, no, 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 no. Self-carriage is the horse doing what you've asked it to do until you ask it to do something else. So self-carriage is standing when tied. Self-carriage is self-loading onto the trailer. All of these things are self-carriage just as much as cantering in 20 meter circle until you're asked to trot or turn. So that's really important. After we've got all of that, then we can start thinking about the hindquarters. Now, the great thing about taking control of the hindquarters independently of the shoulders is that it gives us all sorts of things. And mostly, you know, which is most fun for most people is flying changes, of course, because it gives us control of the hindquarters separately. What often happens, and you'll have seen it a lot with people trying to do flying changes or trying to teach their horse flying changes, and the horse only changes lead in front. What happens, what's happened there is the horse has been thrown over with the shoulders and so changed and the back 
hasn't changed. The problem with that method is that the canter comes from the back end of the horse. So really all we need to do is we need to move the new inside hind forward and underneath the horse. And if you have independent hindquarter control, then you can do that. So that's why my training goes all the way from your first sort of touch of the horse, where you're working out what its emotional level is and how to engage it with learning, all the way through the lateral work and everything else through flying changes. And that's where I finish on flying changes. But I would love you to join me. If you can't join me in the course at the moment, then that's fine. Do try and come along to some of these meetings where I'm having a free meeting every Wednesday. This is Brisbane time, 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Brisbane time. And I'm doing it um, twice because it's a better time in the morning for the people in the United States. Um, and it's probably a better time for the people in Europe now. This might still be a little bit early in the morning. Sorry about that. Um, but if you can join me, please do. All my, um, the Can Do Gold course is a lifetime membership and currently 50% off. So that is because of this COVID-19 virus. We're all stuck at home. I really think it's important that we have good supportive communities around us and the Can Do Equine community is the strongest, most supportive community in the equestrian field. So I would really love you to join us. So go along to my website, canduequine.com and have a look at the shop. And all you need to do is put in the um, coupon code at checkout. So the prices on there are the actual normal prices. But if you go through the checkout and put in the code COVID-19 in capital letters, and it's written up there anyway you'll be able to see it um, you get 50 percent off which is fantastic and that's also available for payment plans so if you rather pay for each month over 12 months then you can do that as well anyway i hope to see you soon thanks for watching bye